Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Sold As Is, and today we're going to talk about how to change... <laughs> you messed with me right there. It was weird. All like, it was like... <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Sold As Is, and today we're going to talk about the challenges of selling your home in a changing market. Hey, welcome back everybody. Matt and Tom here. Another episode of Sold As Is. We just want to communicate with our sellers of what, you know, what are we doing? What value can we bring to our sellers in a shifting market? You know, let's just dive right into it. What's kind of like the first thing that we want to, you know, bring up when we sit down and we connect with a seller who's looking to price their home in in our changing market? Yeah, I mean, you know, I think one of the things that we're looking at, you and I, is looking at, obviously, we're running comps. Right. But the biggest indicator that we could look in a shifting market that we're in right now is understanding buyer demand. Right. And the focus on that is understanding properties under contract. Okay. So when we sit down with a seller, we're looking, obviously, we're looking at actives, pendings, and solds, but we're really focusing in on how many properties have one under contract because that's really our lead indicator to tell us where the market's going with buyers. Right. Uh, before, we would see probably five or six, maybe seven active listings and probably seven, eight pendings right. uh, are under contract properties and right. we're not necessarily seeing that as much. So we're really, as we're looking at that particular property, we're looking at what is the buyer demand right now mm-hmm. for that property? Because okay. if there's only one or two pendings, that's telling us that that, that particular product is not going to get the amount of activity that it was once getting in, the, in that market was right. that was more seller driven. So getting driven. in detail with the numbers and checking out what is this demand in your particular area. Yeah, because right. you know, in an upwardly trending market like it used to be, you wouldn't pay much attention to solds or pendings. You were looking mm-hmm. at what active was. If I met with you as a seller and told you, man, your house is worth uh, 600,000, let's just say, but right. all the actives in the inventory were in the market were 650, well, right. I wasn't giving you a realistic number that was true value. Right. And today, you know, we're we're now not necessarily focusing on the actives as much as we're looking at what are buyers bidding on right right yeah so we're taking a look at the um active actives that are going pending meaning they went under contract yep. so once we've sat down we've established you know the the demand going on in the area what's the next kind of you know step that we'll take a look at well you know, after i think a look at that. what we should touch base on real quick is understanding why the buyer demand is what it is right okay well i you can know? tell i can tell you a couple off the top of my head we'll, we'll we can share. talk about well, number one inflation Inflation, right? yeah. Number two. So on inflation, meaning buyers are taking money and they're putting it elsewhere. Right. Gas, food, groceries, things like that. They're, so yeah, their availability to move their money into a mortgage is, is less. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, number two, rate increase. Yeah. Priced out a whole set of buyers that were, mm-hmm. they were marginal to begin with. Their, their debt to income ratios were kind of at the end and this kind of put them on the sidelines. Right. So the marginal buyers, they, they got wiped out, which yep. leaving, you know, the, the actual solid buyers that, you know, had, yep. you know, good income, steady jobs, yep. you know, good money in the bank, everything like that. Yep. Number three, um, stock market. Yeah. We see a lot of people that had their money in the stock market and yeah. potentially half to a quarter of their portfolio that they were going to use to buy a home. Yeah. Completely gone. There were a lot of buyers out there that were pulling money out of their 401k to yeah. buy their, their home and all of a sudden they're, 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 they, there's no money, there's no money right. left in there. Right. You know? And the crypto market, I right. mean, half the crypto millionaires aren't crypto millionaires anymore right now. Right. So I think those are a lot of things that add to the buyer, yeah. de- uh, buyer demand. Right. And as well and, as a fear of inflation, I mean, a fear of a recession, really. Yeah, absolutely. The recession is going to be the biggest fear because they want to save whatever money they have in case times get lean. Cool. So this yeah. is all leading towards buyer demand being, you know, a little bit less than what we normally are. Yeah. So, and I think it's important to educate the sellers on why buyer demand is the way it is because that's going to be our leading indicator as realtors for them to understand why we're pricing the property the way we are. Right. Absolutely. And then from once we now we looked at buyer demand, now we look at the active properties. Okay. Um, because we're getting a gauge at how many down arrows are there right on those active properties because that tells us you know how long these properties are going to be on the market and how much how far down they are right you know they're they're, they're heading down right. a lot of down arrows on active inventory right <laughs> right now. right because most people aren't anticipating um the sellers are unaware that our market is trending down so we're seeing a lot of price reductions is that that's yeah. what you mean by down arrow yes yes is we're, we're t- you're talking about price reduction yeah, absolutely so we're taking a look at the pending we're taking a look at the peop- the sellers that are reducing price Um, to be able to generate more buyer activity. Yeah, because, you know, the worst fear for, the worst thing for a seller is days on market. Right. You know, that's kind of the almost, 
the kiss of death for a lot of properties is days on market. Right. You know, nobody wants to buy a lemon. And days on market makes buyers feel like, I don't want to buy that property. Right. I don't want to be the guy that owns that home. And nobody else wants right. it. Well, why should I? What's wrong with it? And then as the prices get lowered, they're second guessing that price reduction. Mm -hmm. So this kind of helps us to have that conversation with the seller on how to price their home. Right. So this is an example of what we don't want you to be, right? We don't yeah. want you to have the downward errors. We don't want your days on market to go up. Absolutely. So we take a look at that and then we transition into into what? Well, then we're going to now go macro. So okay. first we started out micro. We're looking at your neighborhood. We're staying within a mile of your of your property. We're staying within 300 square feet of your, your home, mm -hmm. staying within 10 years of the year built. But now we've got to look macro to say, well, if this buyer is buying in Studio City, they're also probably going to look at Valley Village. Right. They're also going to look at Sherman Oaks. Mm -hmm. So we got to look at actives and what the competition is um, and the buyer demand is for these other areas. Because right. although that price might be good for your hyper-local area, mm -hmm. on the macro level, we might be helping sell that neighbor's house just on the other side of the street for you that's in a, in, a, in Valley Village. Right. And um, we need to look at that because right. I think that, that has a lot to do with buyers really want a good bang for their buck right now. Right. Right? You nailed it on the head right there. You, the buyers right now are looking for the best value proposition. Yeah. So we would be doing you a disservice if we didn't look at the neighboring cities um, Absolutely. Because right now you're entering kind of yeah. a competition. Yeah. I mean, most most buyers are added $700 to their mortgage payment. Mm -hmm. So they are realizing that I'm going to need, I'm going to, I want that house to have the most amenities that I can. I'm not settling like I was willing to uh, at a 3.2% interest rate at 5.5. At right. I need my money's worth. It, I've got to have my money's worth. <laughs> right. and, and as agents, as we're pricing these homes for the sellers, we need to be aware of that. Absolutely. So we, we look micro we look and macro. then we look macro okay. to kind of tell us how we're going to look when we come out to market. So our natural transition after looking macro would be talking about pricing, right? Strategic pricing at that, right? Yeah, absolutely. You know, one of the things I, I think a lot of agents make mistakes is understanding the buyer thought process when, when they when they call us and they say, Tom, Matt, we're looking to buy a home. They don't say, I want to buy a home at 652, 800. Right. <laughs> you know, right, right. they don't do that. Yeah. They say, Tom, show me home 650 and below. Right. Tom, show me home 625 and below. Mm -hmm. Hey, show us homes five, 600 and below. Right. So a lot of agents, I think when they price these properties, they um, price it a few bucks for, for $2,200, that buyer didn't see their home. And it's not until they cycle through all the inventory that they didn't like that they'll bump their price up to 675 and below. And then all of a sudden there's that property at 652, 888. Right. And meanwhile, what happened? A it, lot of buyers missed out on that property because they priced it above the, the average yeah. you know, buyer search. But criteria. that seller stood on the market right. 17, 18, 19, 20 right. days before that buyer stepped up his price point to come look at that house. Right. And then the the kiss of death came the to kiss, them, right. which is days on days market. Days on market, yeah. You know, and buyer appeal for that property is going to be down. Okay. So strategically pricing your home. So, you know, although your house is probably worth six fifty two eight hundred and eighty eight dollars and ninety six cents we're probably going to price your home at six forty nine nine right. also into that so once once we've talked about pricing we've also have to consider the condition as well right this is going to be another segue before we get into pricing is we also have to figure out the condition absolutely. of the home right absolutely you know uh i think that's kind of an old school you know um uh, thought and understand that kind of went out the window as the market was going up right and that's back again right. is this price match location mm -hmm. this price match condition mm -hmm. so as we're looking at your home we're really looking in depth at you know your floor plan um, staging right. although it's important before it's even now more important than ever is really staging and improvements right you know and and that's the seller has to make that decision whether they want to spend the money to improve the property right but um, it's up to us to let them know can they get a more bang can they get more return for that right. you know what may cost ten or fifteen thousand dollars to upgrade may net them an extra forty fifty thousand dollars in price right. if they were to invest that money because the seller now more than ever is going to leverage 
um, the the cost of buying that home into the mortgage. Yeah. So they don't mind spending a little bit more if I'm going to get a home in better condition. So that yeah, maybe that house needs work, but I just spent all my money in my down payment. I don't have fifty thousand dollars to spend in upgrades. I'll spend thirty, forty, fifty thousand more in price because my down payments an extra five thousand dollars my mortgage payments an extra hundred and twenty dollars and i get this house already done up right so sitting with a seller and letting them know um is it worth improving some of those uh kitchens and baths some carpets some paint that that's a conversation they need to have so after that i mean you know we probably aren't going to be the only conversation that people are going to have in regards to you know putting potentially putting their house up for sale um we we do come across the conversation of well um, this other person told me that they're gonna, you know, you told me five fifty, but the other person told me they can get it for five sixty five, five seventy five, or even six hundred, or six hundred. Yeah, yeah. You know what? What is the? Um, are are we doing? What's the natural conversation there? Like why? Well, why are we getting different prices? I think there's two things. Okay. Um, one is the old school. So, uh, other realtors trying to buy a listing they're buying the listing meaning they're going to go and look at the highest comps that are out there and they're going to go out and tell you oh yeah your house is worth seven hundred thousand or six hundred thousand mm-hmm. dollars and they realize once they get it listed they get it on the market a few days they're going to come back and say uh we need to uh, improve the price right. you know also known as a, a price, a reduction. price reduction yeah okay. that little downward the arrow downward comes arrow. on okay. and they think that hey i'm gonna go and show the seller that i tried to get them this amount of money and they probably had the best intention of doing so but when they realize they didn't get that price they're going to come down and they're going to ask for a price improvement or a price reduction and um essentially keep your house on the market a little bit longer so that's one is right. they're going to buy a listing and there's okay. a unfortunately there's a lot of agents that are out there the second thing is is they really not studying the comps and the market trends um look i've been in the business 20 something years i've right. seen war i've seen 9 11 i've seen stock market crashes you named it we've worked through most of yeah, it right. and i think it, what i've learned there is to really study the market trends study the market right. where are my lag indicators where are my indicators going you know um, looking at the souls in a market that's shifting downwards is telling me the past we got to look at the future right now right. again it's those under contract properties that are telling me the present of what's going on right you know and with the future what are people bidding on if there's only one buyer out there that's bought in your neighborhood that's telling me that we've got to make sure that that price is 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 right Right. You know, we just did a, a listing right now where we priced below market. We got ten thousand dollars over the asking price, which was right in the range of those other comps. But those other comps that are right in that range are still sitting there. Right. And time is money. Right. Yeah. You know, I think what a lot of agents don't realize and some sellers don't realize is that every day your house stays on the market, you're paying the mortgage, mm-hmm. you're paying the taxes, you're paying the interest. So time is money. Yeah. And good agents like us uh we we know that yeah so getting your home sold quickly in the shortest amount of time at the best price with the best terms it's really the best thing that we can do for them i mean but ultimately you know like you said like paying attention to the details the other sellers or the other agents that aren't paying attention to the market trends yeah ended up helping us sell that home Again, for the value proposition, right? Why am I going to go spend four thirty, four twenty, yeah. or four forty on this when this one has all the same bells and whistles yeah. and it's cheap and it's yeah. less expensive? It's no different than seven, when you're going to look seven for... other sellers helped us get mm-hmm. ten thousand dollars more for the price because yeah. uh, that seller listened to us, bought into our strategic pricing, walked out with ten thousand dollars more. It's going to stay on the market thirty days less, which means he's going to pay off his loan sooner mm-hmm. and get his cash faster. Yeah, you know. Um, Also, we're seeing uh, buyer concessions. Right, yeah. I mean, that was something that was totally unheard of where, hey, um, seller's going to pay $10,000 of my closing costs. Mm -hmm. That's bad. And it was something for probably the past five, seven years was not even a a conversation to be had in writing an offer. Not at all. Buyer had to have their own down payment, their own closing costs. And right now, we've got two escrows in where seller paid $16,000 in closing costs to help that buyer buy that home. Yeah. And it's not unusual and mm-hmm. it's 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 it was something that used to be the norm. Yeah, it, well it's it's almost you know like old trends, you know 80s 80s trends coming back. It's yeah. almost a trend that's coming back into the market yeah. because the buyer man is, is slowing down. Yeah. So um yeah, we just did two where concessions went to closing costs and it before 
in our previous market, and that's why we're doing this video is to show that, hey, we're in a shifting market. Yeah. And some of these trends are, are starting to come back. Yeah. So, so don't just, be surprised when an offer comes in and the seller buyer's ask, asking for some closing costs. And it's really a smart thing to do for a buyer. I mean, a buyer to leverage those closing costs and not have and be able to, you know, not have to part with as much cash, it's not a bad thing. Right. So let's, let's just recap real quick. We, we've dived into condition, okay. making sure that staging and everything is really good, uh, making sure that the price points are, are right within there. Don't price your home at 652 800 mm-hmm. Price the house at 6549 right. or something like that. We looked at the macro and we, the micro trends. Micro and macro, we dive in. We look at the leading indicators, which right now are buyer demand. Mm-hmm. Um, we also look at actives and where the prices are going down and stuff right. like that. And then yeah. we pick a, pick a price that's going to put your home in the best position to sell at the highest price. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Yep. And then we look, obviously, we look at the best terms for your buyer, make sure they're pre qualified. We do some vetting to make sure that that buyer is really qualified. Perfect. Yeah. All right, guys. So I think that wraps it up for our video today. If you have any questions about the selling process or you'd like to meet with us, um, we have a link below, a calendar link. Book it with us. We'd be more than happy to help you in your journey. And uh, we'll see you next time on our next video. Yep. See you in the next one, guys.